Well, the dogs are barking, so you know what time it must be. Um, welcome, everybody. We're doing the DM after party for session six, Curse of the Crimson Throne. We just wrapped a couple minutes ago. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about the noise. The, uh, the prep that went into tonight's game, I thought... Now, I had marked here that I had learned how to share the dragons, so we're collecting them, as I was joking during the stream. Um, we've got a couple pseudo-dragons now that are like pets slash friends of the party. Um, it's kind of fun to send tele telepathic messages. I'm doing that through a whisper. Um, so, it's neat. I got a good laugh out of TJ with one of the things I said, and, and the rest of the party can't hear it, so I think it works well. Uh, it's a good mechanic. I'm, I'm going to keep going, and, and I need to invigorate some of that. So I'll be reflecting a little bit on ideas. Um, we're off next week, so I've got a little bit of time to gather up some custom content and, and kind of personalize things just a little bit. Um, but the sharing doesn't work. So <laughs> whatever we had going after last week's stream is not working tonight, and I don't know why. I'll have to look into that. I may make them into little PCs and then pass them out, depending on how recurring they actually wind up being. Um, okay, so I, for an upcoming character did not appear tonight called Grau. Um, I used a veteran, and I thought he's going to be a little bit weak. I think this is okay. Um, the Otiag fight that they just completed, I used straight-up stats. So instead of the CR3 Pathfinder version, it's CR5. D and D five version or CR six or something, and he he was a tough fight, and that was good. Um, it was helped by the fact that he was accidentally enlarged by the party's sorcerer, and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, not helped much. I honestly forgot about the mechanics entirely and, and just ran the fight as is. But I did double the the size of the uh, creature on the screen, so everybody's like, "Oh, you know, that's that was the important part." Um, I. Used a bard. I used the multiverse, Mordenkainen's multiverse. Actually, it was weird because I, when I looked for the book, it wasn't named Mordenkainen's. It was D&D's Monsters of the Multiverse. But whatever. Uh, I used a bard for the upcoming uh, Trina. Let's see, Trina Sabor character. Did not get that far tonight. Um, she has a wand of days. I swapped that to a wand of paralysis. Again, that'll that'll we'll get into more detail when she goes to use that. Um, I I did appreciate the implementation that Fantasy Grounds did for potions in this um, work in the Curse of the Crimson Throne material. So it simply says use the spell, and that's perfect for me because I don't have to then convert the spell from Pathfinder to 5e. I just go find the equivalent spell. The only time where it might be a problem is when there's not an equivalent spell, but I'll, I'll deal with it. Um, and I had to, the description of Shield of Faith said it was plus 3 AC, but it's plus 2 in 5e. I just removed the plus 3 straight off of it. We'll just use it as written. And uh, that character had several mithril items, and I just swapped them out for plus 1s. Um, I'm okay, as, as mentioned, with giving the party some more magic than they might otherwise get in a 5e campaign, because this one's going to be a little rough. Okay, so um, I had prepared event 6, um, used a, a, a map, one of the maps that I had done earlier, so that was all that prep work that I did, getting all of those maps ready. Um, had, had that queued up, they didn't wind up using it, but it's going to happen as soon as we start next week, or well, week after next, next time we play. Um, so that's, that's for event six. I skipped ahead to event seven, which is what I had when I, what I planned to do. Um, that was the Otiug uprising. It's not much of an uprising when it's just one, but, um, it was a tough fight and that's what I wanted. And I remember from last, after I said, we want to, want to do a combat heavy session to keep that pillar strong. And we did. And that, that worked. Um, achieved my goals. Anyway, I used the existing 5e creature. As mentioned, um, I prepped event 12, and I also foreshadowed it a little bit, so I, the party was wanting to talk to Cressetta. Cressetta wasn't there, and so that's what she's off doing, is participating in this initial interrogation, um, or the discussion of it, or what have you. And this is where she's going to start sowing her seeds of doubt, um, and it will come up later. But basically, in the campaign, this character allies herself closer to the PCs than the Queen, and this is the seeds of that. So she was summoned to the castle, wasn't available. She's going to come back with this quest. Um, and that's all the party knows right now. So like I said, um, 
I used the Slum Quarter 1. This is one of the Paizo flip mats that I pulled into Fantasy Grounds and did the line of sight and stuff for. Um, didn't use much of it, but it was it was good to have. It was good to have. It was good that it was ready. So I plan to do the Odia Uprising, the Drunken Guard, and the Queen's Scapegoat. I kind of figured one, two, three. Uh, the Odia Uprising was going to be a straight up fight, and I didn't know how long it would take, but I figured the uh, NPC interaction, or the, you know, conversation heavy uh, Drunken Guard thing would be a good after. Um, but what happened instead was they decided to identify the dagger and I kind of tossed that to them. I was going to ambush them on the way or on the way back, but they transitioned too quickly. I were like, okay, so when we get back to the castle, da, 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 um, which was fine. And I didn't want to, it would have felt railroady to say, you know, wait on your way back from the castle, this actually happened. So I just kind of rolled with that um, and, and let them move their characters around the city without interrupting that um, it's important to set those up so that they happen, so that the party feels like they chose to interact. So what I did instead was when uh, there was no wizard available, they wanted to go talk to a wizard, they left the Citadel to go do that, and they heard screaming in the distance. Then they decided to engage. It's it's still heavy-handed, but it's not as heavy-handed as saying, suddenly, and while you least expect it, you're attacked, right? It's like, no, you're screaming in the distance. They had agency. They could have ignored that. They didn't. Um, so that worked really well. I'm, I uh, pulled spheres and orbs out of Fantasy Name Generator. I made up Spencer Mezigrew and Greg the Half Ogre on the spot. I don't think I have stats for Half Ogre, so I was making all of that up. Um, and the robbery and stuff, none of this is in book. But I wanted to add to the City in Chaos type feel that we've got and I, I thought that scene played out reasonably well let the party pick up some items um specifically the the purchased a wand of wonder which actually did pay off so the uh player uh, sam who's playing i think it's sam, it's sam? Yeah. um who's playing the sorcerer picked a wild magic sorcerer specifically for randomness to occur and it has not yet occurred we've not seen a spell surge yet um, so now he's got a wand that does just literally spell search. Like you use the wand and roll on the table. Um, I gave him a heck of a price. I, I stated that he couldn't get anybody to buy it because who would willingly buy such a thing? And um, I'm really glad I did. Normally I wouldn't. I'd be more stingy with magic items. But in this particular case, it's really it really paid off. I mean, already tonight paid off. It should hopefully pay off again. He used the wand. He enlarged the enemy which is obviously not what you'd want to do. But, um, yeah, it was good. And and the players reacted, and everybody got some emotion and, and some charge. It's a, it's a good part of the episode. You should go watch it. Um, so they wanted to identify the dagger. The dagger is a rakshasha. It's a low low-level rakshasha. But the book says they can't identify it, and I don't think it says why. So this is a creature that's in Pathfinder. It's not in d and I went ahead and conferred the immunity to spells below 6th level that is on the normal Rakshasha to this Rakshasha to explain why Identify wasn't working. Um, it also meant Legend Lore didn't work, which was a bit of a shock to everyone. It's a 5th level spell, right? And they spent quite a bit of money on it. Because they had invested so many character resources to try and get this information, I then wanted them to do the arcana check and i do a lot of checks and people say don't roll dice and i myself have given that advice like don't roll dice you don't have to but uh, it's my way of engaging the players in a mechanical sense to help reward the decisions they made when creating those characters if that makes any sense um just trying to give and take as the the dm and hopefully we can kind of get into a rhythm where people are like oh can i roll this can i roll that and and then um you know, maybe get to a point where they're just rolling and asking me if it worked, right? Because I have no problem deflecting if they rolled and it was inappropriate. I'm like, eh, no. Anyway, um, I wanted to reward that investment. So they know that the dagger's a rakshasha. Rakshasha, rakshasha. I don't know how to say that. Whatever. <laughs> so they... Uh, didn't do too much with it. They wanted to go and ask Varric about it. But again, uh, Varric is in an unknown location. Um, 
unknown because I couldn't find in the book where it said he was. But also, if, if you think it through, um, Cressetta did not want Varric infecting other guards people with his sedition. And he also is saying some very onerous things about the queen. And so, you know, she couldn't exactly take him to the castle or he'd just be killed. So I'm going to tell the party later that he's in hiding and uh, Cressetta has had someone hide him and who that someone is will become important later. So, um, to come, to come down the line. But again, like, this is very similar to her being away, setting up event 11. Um, I'm foreshadowing the rift or the potential rift between Cressetta and the queen. And I'm doing this in a couple of different ways. And if you, if you're subtle, but repeat it a couple of times over, then it will click. It will really drive home when it's time. So I'm just layering, basically. Um, I think that's it as far as my notes. So I'm a little over prepped again. Uh, I prepped all of this stuff just today. Um, so that was good. I mean, none of it was, was any heavy dungeon crawls. Um, you know, one combat encounter. There was a little bit of loot with the NPCs, but hardly enough to, to worry about, so I kind of got lucky. On the prep side, excuse me. Oh, I'm tired. Busy Dungeon Master's life never never slows down. But, um, anyway, I do need to prep more, right? need to make sure that, that I'm ready and have the next encounter loaded. The event 11 is going to be like a rooftop chase. And Pathfinder has their own rules for that, and 5e has rules for that. I don't care about any of the rules for that. For the most part, I'm just going to try and get the party, the players of the party, to use their character abilities to solve the problem. Um, doesn't need to be too fancy. I'm going to make it hard to solve this problem. But um, in general, it, it should work. It should be okay. It should pay off. So that's prepped. And I'm, I'm, frankly, if we do the Drunken Guard encounter, and we do the Crusetta NPC conversation, and we do the Queen scapegoat. Um, what I intend to do there, so they, they're they're looking for this bard that I mentioned earlier. That's the, how the adventure goes. Crusetta is going to ask them to go and find her, and bring her back alive. The um, and again, they've done this successfully for Crusetta, so that all makes sense. And she's she owes them some money, so she'll be you know with coin in hand, ready for them to do that. That should all pay out. Or pan out, pay out, pan out because she paid out. <laughs> Whatever. The uh, I'm gonna open it up and be like, okay, what are you gonna do? I'm not gonna say she's at this building. Here's your map. Start exploring. Right. I'm gonna open it up to free play and be like, how do you guys want to solve this problem? And maybe let that drag out for a couple of days in game time. We'll see what they do. They're smart and they know their abilities pretty well. So. Maybe they'll just be like, oh yeah, I cast Locate Object on her brooch or something. I don't know. We'll see what they come up with. But um, if it stalls or drags, then we can start giving hints or maybe throw a random encounter at them or, or some other kind of urbanness thing. Um, but I think that will drag on time-wise. This is the reason I brought it up. For, so for prep for next game... I think between the Drunken Guard and between the free play segment of the Queen's Escape Guard, I probably won't need anything else. I'll have some more ready just in case. We'll see what that is. But that's it. That is my after action report for session six of Curse of the Crimson Throne. It's going well. We're very nearly finished with the first chapter. Um, <laughs> right? I mean, isn't that amazing? We talk about that, that specific book and it's just size um a lot of material here but but you know we're making good time making good progress so six sessions um i'm gonna say nine sessions probably for chapter one so i don't know 30 or 40 sessions it will be done <laughs> that's all right this is a good group and they they're here for it they're here for it so It'll be all right. Okay, well, um, thank you. If you've watched so far, please sound off for me. Say hello in the comments or hop on the Discord and let me know. Give me just some kind of feedback. 
I'm not asking for the like and subscribe and all that. Hopefully you have already. Um, and I'm fine with that if you do, but the one thing I could really use is a little bit of feedback on where this is going. Am I rambling too much? Is this information useful? Etc. right? Some of this is just a, a journal for me, but um, the point was, the, the goal that I set out was to hopefully teach some lessons along the way and help you guys learn how to run good games. It's very important to me that I can help others learn this craft that I've honed over the last several decades. So... Yeah, give me some feedback if you're around and if you've watched this far. Otherwise, I'll see you all next week.